Beyond that, here are some new things I'm experimenting with. I tried this, you guys might remember that I said in my 20s I experimented with tons of lotions and mostly rejected all of them. But I do find my son's feet, because he's barefoot most of the time, dry out a lot more than mine do. Mine, I might start using this in the summer when I'm in sandals all the time and my feet are dried out just all the time. But for most of the year, it's not a problem for me. But his are so dry, we've started using this. Once a day, usually in the evening, I will put on gloves so I'm not getting it all over my hands and smooth this into his feet skin and then put on socks. And I have noticed a marked difference in how soft they are. This penetrates the callus really deeply and I find that um, it helps the outer, like, dirty layer of his skin that's so hard to scrub and clean slough off. And I can use a pedicure knife to just take super tiny, thin little layers off of his feet so they stay cleaner. But also, it keeps them so much more soft and flexible so he's not having as many cracks anymore. And this has been a really great help for him. I absolutely hate the feel of this. I absolutely hate the smell of it. I refuse to use it. But... It definitely has its place, and for my son's feet, it's been incredibly helpful. Finally, topical retinol treatments are the recommended way to treat this skin, to keep it soft and to keep it sloughing off more at an ordinary rate because, ironic that that's the name, um, because the skin doesn't flake off like regular. Like you can see, I lost a little tiny patch here but generally it doesn't come off. It just gets thicker and thicker and thicker and retinol can help with the shedding and also moisturization. So I got this, just 1% retinol in a, in a gel liquid. And I'm gonna start applying this to my hands probably at night before bed. It does make your skin very photosensitive and it also means like I can't touch my eyes or my mouth or my face because a buildup of this can be actually really painful and dangerous for your skin. So. Proceed with caution, but I am curious to see what effect it might have on my hands or feet if I use it all the time. Because I use, uh, keep my hand skin so much thinner, I have a feeling that this is going to be best for my hands. It's going to be a gentle way to maybe help them exfoliate better. We will see. So that's experiment number one. Experiment number two, somebody commented recently saying, isn't this like hyperkeratosis on dogs? We use this one product, I forget what it was called now, on dogs, and it just falls right off. So I did a whole deep dive into that and like, what is that cream versus like what doctors recommend or what's a prescription strength cream for um, this skin? And I happened to find this, which I can't believe I have never seen in my life before. So most creams, most urea creams and so forth, come with about 2% salicylic acid, sometimes 1%, and almost never more than that. But if you're getting a prescription strength cream, it's going to be more like 6%. And that cream for dogs that that lady told me about, it was 6.6% salicylic acid that is released slowly with just a tiny bit of urea. And then I happened to stumble upon this. I don't even know how I found it, just in my searching this is 5% salicylic acid with just a tiny bit of urea. And so this may actually help the calluses just completely fall off. It helps exfoliate. It helps it separate and fall off. So I am going to be experimenting with this on my feet. So now here comes the big question. Do I want to not shave my feet and use this and see how it goes see if it falls off before I do the shave, because it's about time to shave my feet. Or do I want to shave my feet and then wait a lot longer to try this? And also, what what's the expectation and desire from my audience? Like, I know everybody wants to see the feet shaving, and I am so used to it. Like, I want to do the feet shaving. I'm almost thinking that for my feet, I might start using this on one foot and shave the other foot and then just keep the videos going for weeks or even months, showing the progress and the difference between the two and see whether this in the long haul really is a better way to manage shedding of the skin versus shaving or whether I really prefer shaving. And that, so that's the, <laughs> that's the question and that's where we're at. I'd love to try using this to help the keratoderma shed. It could possibly make my feet way too sensitive. It could possibly shed so unevenly that it's really uncomfortable. Lots of question marks. I want to use this on my hands 
to try and see if I can help this skin gently shed, but it does make you photosensitive, so I think I probably will only use it once at night. I'll continue to use this on my son's feet, and if either of these prove to work really well, I might begin using them on his hands as well. But this is really gross, slimy stuff, and it does kind of make the skin a little sensitive because it becomes so soft. So I don't know if we want to use that on hands. And then I will continue to use this at night. In fact, in the morning is what I meant to say. And this all day long.